But um, yeah, I mean, after after We're it's live. recorded, yeah. There we go. We're live. We have we have a very special guest today. <laughs> uh, it's Fausto Di Martini. Fa Fausto, um, I will let you uh, sort of introduce yourself. I do it every time because, first of all, I'm really bad with names. But now I know how to to spell your name in a proper way because <laughs> thanks, man. You told me it a couple of times, but also. I don't want to butcher your credits or anything. So if you could just introduce us uh, who you are and of course, what yeah. you do. Well, first of all, thanks a lot for, uh, for the invitation. Honored to be part of this. And uh, so I'm my, honored. <laughs> yeah, you're too kind, man. Uh, my name is Fausto Martini, and I'm, uh, I'm currently working as a concept designer, um, mainly movies. Um, I've been working on the Avatar sequels uh, for uh, quite a quite a bit of time now, and um, and it's been a lot of fun um, working in in this industry. Um, I I work at Blizzard Entertainment for uh, quite a bit of time. Uh, I was around like eight nine years, and then uh, three years ago I moved to to uh, working in films. Um, more as a freelance contractor uh, and it was the first movie that I officially worked on was uh, Transformers uh, before that I was I did some stuff for Robocop uh, the reboot and after Transformers I, I was very fortunate to jump to Star Wars and I did some uh, a, a lot of work actually on the new TIE Fighters um, uh, the exterior and interior damn um, and also <laughs> uh, uh, Han Solo's uh, cargo ship. You know, sorry if you haven't seen Star Wars. So I'm gonna. Yeah, miss. just dropping spoiler bombs. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> dropping spoiler bombs. Yes. <laughs> well, I think by now everyone watch it, so it's not a big deal. So. I didn't. <laughs> My God. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, such a blasphemy. I know, right? <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, so that's very a very short description of what I'm been doing recently so yeah very fortunate to be working on um, on those shows with like crazy talented people learning a lot so it's been a lot of fun I'm really enjoying it. yeah man I it's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on this because you know I I, I know you for about two years now it's actually funny because I'm I was opening Facebook today and it's just like hey you've been friends with Fausto for two years exactly today. I was like, yeah. what the? <laughs> yeah, it's such an awesome coincidence, man. Yeah. So hot. So hot. Man. So, so hot. hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, you know, and, and one of the reasons, like, I figured, you know what, everyone should fear, like, hear about you is, um, and I, I'm sure quite a lot of artists know you already, if not everyone. I, I might be just, like, overestimating or underestimating how many people really know you, but, uh -huh. you know, just thinking about what you've done so far over the last couple of years, your, your career, especially in film, just sort of exploded, like just <laughs> like in a nuclear uh, blast. I've I've seen some of your work before. I, I remember, I think uh, I think it was Matthias uh, Ver Hasselt from Blizzard who actually shared your work uh, before. Mm -hmm. That I saw, like, whoa, who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> and then I think uh, I don't remember where exactly we met for the first time. I, I, uh, we uh, we met in person for the first time when we had lunch together, John Park and I, and we. Oh uh, yes, to, yes, to, that's true. Yeah, Marina. Yeah, I think. yeah so I think yeah, yeah those fun time. times for sure. Um, but yeah, it's just like it's mind blowing how much work you've done, and you. I consider yourself as one of you know the best mechanical hard surface designers. And modelers out there, you know, I, I I know you did that suit for um, the StarCraft cinematic. Is that yes? Correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing that. I think it was uh, I don't remember who overpainted it for like this uh, concept paint. I think I think jo it might have been Jonathan, right? Jonathan, I believe that was Jonathan Ruby. Yeah, right? it's just like I remember that concept it was like holy f damn, sh ah, <laughs> so much porn. Yeah, I know. Ah. Yeah, it was so was, good. It was, it was so good. Such a great painting, and I was like, "Who did that? And how? And and what? And now, like, and when thanks. I when I heard you did it, and Jonathan overpainted it, it's just like, wow. Yeah, and also a very important to say that Joe, uh, Joe Peterson, uh, he oh, was yeah. also the 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 concept designer, right? Like he did he did those uh, like 
the, the 2D painting uh, in in three quarter view, and it was just fantastic. And okay. Nick, I didn't Nick, know that. So yeah, Nick, Nick, yeah, Nick, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, like we can, I can. Yeah, we have to talk about Joe, you know, because Joe's, Joe has been a huge influence on, on my work because I, I joined Blizzard and um, and he got hired a couple months after me. And he, he was just like always like a beast of designing the coolest stuff. Well, kind of same influences of in things that we that we love, you know, like anime, you know, Japanese design. And, right. And when we start working on StarCraft, uh, Nick Carpenter, that was the director and our director at the same time. He was he just kind of put us together to to work on this suit, and and he did this first design based on on a model that I not based, but I was like I did a model at home because I was so passionate about developing the marine that uh, for, uh, the, a new marine for mm -hmm. StarCraft II that end up doing a couple versions at home, and one of the versions like he he used a couple of the parts, but he, he was like very small the version that i did was very like fragile compared to what it, uh, joe did he did more like a tank you know yeah and yeah. nick and nick did a he had a huge influence our directing that whole thing so whenever that concept came to life then i was able to translate uh translate that to 3d mm -hmm. and and one of the parts that was a lot of fun for me it was all the transformation of the the, the marine because all those uh, exposed parts, like the spine, and you know, you know, for who is familiar with the trailer, uh, might know what I'm talking about. Which you know has tons of components that move around, and that yeah. I didn't have any concepts for that. It was mostly me winging up, like all the mechanical stuff, which was a lot of fun. That was awesome. Yeah, I remember that trailer it was, you know, rad, radical. Yeah, it does. It was you know, really good. Um, huge, huge props for the whole cinematic team. You know. For sure. Yeah, yeah, you guys, you guys owned it there. <laughs> That's for sure. So your first film was Transformers, right? Yeah. Well, I work on RoboCop uh, more like a, as a consultant before. Um, oh, okay. And uh, so I did quite a bit of work on the side for them. And but uh, the first official movie that I, you know, I was in the union and everything was Transformers. Um, gotcha. And, yeah. So yeah, did that you, was. We, did you leave uh, Blizzard just to work on that movie, or like how? Well, did yeah, I, I left because I felt that uh, you know, uh, since I, I had the opportunity to join the union, and, uh, right. and they required the, on that show in particular, the art, uh, Ben Proctor was there as an art director, and he mentioned, you know, I always, I mean, you know, very important to say, Ben Proctor inspired me to become a 3d designer i same here same yeah here. <laughs> exactly so I, so when I, I i i i've been talking to him for a long time since the the, the we met at, at uh alex Alvarez's house at, uh, at normal mm -hmm. and he he came and he i he asked where i was working and i, and I mentioned that i work at blizzard and he paid big compliments for the cinematic uh, uh that we were talking about the the, the building metal marine and he he was like, oh, you work at Blizzard, man. You guys did that Marine being put together. And he was like, yeah, we, you know, I work on that. And so we kind of start talking more after that. And mm -hmm. long story short, like when I, you know, when I realized how much work he did and the quality and how much he was pushing using 3D and all that, like he inspired me to do kind of the same thing. Right. And so when I had the opportunity to actually work physically around him, I definitely decided that it would be, you know, the time for me to kind of leave the company and, you know, join the, the those guys and, you know, and just try yeah. to see how, how we go. You know, yeah, it was definitely like uh, a, a, a move that is not easy to make, but I, you know, I felt that it was totally worth the risk. Yeah, I, I was in the same spot a couple of years ago. So Yeah, no, I totally understand. It's, it's, uh, it's totally, yeah, it's like one big unknown. One thing that uh, everyone should realize when you you're asked to join a union, or you 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 know you you get that opportunity to be in a union, you have to also know that it can collapse at any time. Like the the you, you're getting um you're getting hired for a job, and you're getting invited to the union. But if the film collapses, uh, it, it might be a lost opportunity. You know, um, in most cases, most films. Yeah. That you work towards unions because you have to make thirty days unless you get specifically invited, grandfathered in. It's called right. Yes. Um, then 
it's it's a risk because you might be joining the film and the next day or the same day you're you're coming to the office they're telling you oh we're shutting down <laughs> yeah and, and yeah. frankly it happens to more than more than half the films that are being in development like they don't even they don't even step out from the concept phase because you know the script is too weak or or whatever the situation is there might be a studio call saying oh we're you know we're not developing this we're developing something else so it's a big risk i I was actually working um, with um, um, with uh, one of the production designers on 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 the, on the film that never got made, and, mm -hmm. and you know I knew the risks. Uh, if, uh, thanks to Steve uh, Steve Jung, you know Steve Jung is a yeah. good guy. He yeah. told me a lot about like uh, how it works in the union, and I was like, you know what, I'll try to get my days in and see what happens. If and if I you know work a little bit on the side, a little bit on on side. Uh, that's gonna go pretty well, and you know, I I haven't quit my full time job yet, and good because like a week after it all collapsed, you know, now I'll be like, oh, now I don't have any work. <laughs> uh, wow. So so uh, that was, but I, I I did quit like I think a month later, anyways, because I got a call for Ghost in the Shell, so I was yeah. like, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> I yeah, guess I, I guess I'm gonna work on that then. Uh, so it's a it's a risk. Um, mm -hmm. but it's worth, it's definitely worth a while, especially if it all works out. Then you know, working in union is obviously great, great for a reason that you can work pretty much on any film that is out there. You don't have any, um, yes. any, any situation like oh, I want to work on this, but you're not in union, so you cannot. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for that part, it's 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 great. And but uh, what you're saying about the risk definitely exists. Is definitely, um, it's definitely a, a much less stable uh gig than you know being part of a big studio a uh, big game like a game company for example that is producing two or three very solid titles that you know that's going to be produced so yeah uh yeah movie productions they, they get you know so like, like a lot of times the script is being developed and, and developed and you're there in the art department and all of a sudden the script doesn't go far and all of a sudden the movies is shut down as you said yeah. um <laughs> well, thank thank yeah, thankfully, so far, like the experience that I had, you, you know, it was I was always working in a production that was always going. You know, yeah, yeah. So, very fortunate for that. Yeah, well, w once you're on your level, you know, like there's uh, the, something that uh, I, I've noticed that mm -hmm. you know, if you're on on your your level of of work, you know, where it's such a high quality work, it's Thanks, almost it's almost in most cases you will be on the production that is almost certainly a go, right? right. Although you never know, yeah. <laughs> it's hard. Well, uh, first of all, appreciate you know you, you know what, the, what you're saying about. Uh, don't be the, so the, humble. The, the, don't the, try uh, the humbleness. On yeah. me, the <laughs> no, dude, uh, for sure. Like I, I'm, you know, you know me, Moshe. I mean, I know, like, I you, know, you, you know, you know that uh, I, I will ever have a, I'll always get, you know, have a hard time to 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 think of anything that I do is is really great. You know, especially seeing guys like you and, and you know all those you know a bunch of younger guys and just you got so talented and so much you know you guys produce so much you know so i i, I feel that i have to to keep up you know oh man my it, work it, sucks uh -huh, sucks yeah. dude <laughs> yes uh-huh yeah just like mine so there you go no man you guys are beasts you know so um i have a huge appreciation but honestly the the awesome part about all this is like how much you, i think we inspire each other even yeah. if even if you are like be, you know, um, some people are more competitive than others. In you know, in hindsight, I think that we are all like actually pushing each other, and, and and I think that's great. You know, it's like super positive, and and you know, so I think yeah, that's I that's all good stuff. So I saw saw a, a remark about how interesting is your story of coming to the United States, and I get curious because I haven't heard it. Oh, you have not? Um, nope. Oh, cool, man. Yeah. Uh, well, basically, <clears throat> I was working in Brazil for many years in advertisement, and I'm, you know, I'm very thankful for that kind of school that I was part of because being uh, working on advertisement in everywhere is is a great learning curve because you have to be re you have to become very fast because the deadlines are crazy, um, and in Brazil in particular. With the time that I was working on advertisement, it was even crazier, right? So, so yeah, you know, quality of the Lord of the Rings with the budget of the budget and time of like 
you know, uh, two weeks. So um, it was, you, you have to learn to be very fast. So I was working on that. But at, at, some, at, at some point, I got kind of, you know, tired of, you know, kind of the same thing, you know, crazy deadlines all the time. And, the, and you're yeah. not really proud of showing the, the, the work because there's a lot of things that are not really uh, directed to entertainment. Um, so what I end up doing is like every free time that I had, I, I always worked on my personal stuff. You know, yeah. this is something that I, since I started working in computer graphics in 3D, it's something that I always uh, reserve some time to do because I feel that, uh, you know, I feel that it's important to keep the, you know, the fire going, you know, like you keep your passion up and, and also it's a really good way to learn new techniques. But also I honestly, I love designing and I love creating s stuff. So I have to do it, you know, so it's a mm -hmm. big part of me. So I was, since I was always doing that, um, I was working on my personal work. I decided to kind of make my personal work more towards uh, companies that I really love to try to work. You know, even, you know, I, Never thought that we had a chance. I would have the chance to do it, uh, but I decided to do a, a space marine inspired on the on the Starcraft marine. Uh, yeah. but I, I did a, like a light suit, a version that it was um, uh, like almost like a light suit marine guy. And I worked on that for a long time. On my spare time, I want to do a the animation and finish the whole thing and and send in a you know in a CD for those guys. You know, it was back and it was more CDs. So, oh, I remember sending <laughs> CDs. Exactly. <laughs> so the problem is uh, I was doing so much crunch time. I was in so many crazy deadlines that I didn't have a chance to actually work on that anymore. And a friend of mine, he saw the work in progress. He's like, man, just post that online. You know? And at that time, it was kind of like, well, post online. What do you mean? You know, it's the, the, the 3D forums, and it was just starting. You know? So it was yeah. not something that I was participating actively in my, this friend of mine, uh, Mario, he's currently in England where he's been working there for a long time. And he, you know, created an account on CG Talk and CG Channel, showed me how to post it. And I ended up posting on a Friday and talking about like, okay, I'm working on this Space Marine and, you know, it's for Blizzard and I would love to work there in the cinematics department. And uh, long story short, the next day, a friend of mine called me and it's like, dude, you know, it's like they, they put the Marine on the front page of the CG Talk and CG channel. And uh, when I went to look at the website, I saw the, the work featured and I, I couldn't believe, it. you know, it was crazy to see that happening. And when I opened yeah. my email, I, 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 I had like job offers from companies from, you know, United States and Europe. And I was just like, what's going on? You know, it's just, <laughs> it was completely surreal. I never expected to have that kind of, you know, reception with the work that I did. It was just, I felt blown away. And, you know, you know, you know, a couple of weeks later, I Blizzard contacted me. So I ended up fly, uh, flying for an interview months later after figuring out if I could get a visa. Um, and, you know, thankfully everything worked out. So crazy. And, yeah. So, yeah, I, th I think six months after I, or eight months after I posted, I think I was, flying to the United States to work there and yeah it was a pretty amazing you know opportunity and I learned so much over there and like met a lot of really talented people so he opened a lot of doors you know so also. how long you've been at Blizzard I worked there for eight, eight years almost nine wow. years huh? yeah that's a lot, lot of time <laughs> it's a long yeah, time yeah so you've been in the industry for a little longer than I was uh, oh yeah Oh, absolutely. No. Yeah, especially if you consider industry working in Brazil uh, with advertisement. Yeah, for sure. I was, yeah, I was, mm. I'm a veteran in, in that sense. <laughs> but, uh, but it's yeah. It's always, uh, it's always like I'm amazed. Uh, I've, you know, Paul Osimo, I'm sure you worked with him before. Yeah, I love Paul. Yeah. It's, that guy, it's like 20, like 20 years in the industry, 25 years. It's just like insane. Yeah, he's he's been in the industry for a long time, working some fantastic stuff. Like yeah, yeah. He, he he touched the 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 Sulaco, you know, the ship from Aliens. Yeah, I guess on one of the Alien uh, uh, one of the Alien movies, they had to they, he had to retouch the ship, uh, the 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 real model. Yeah, uh, he was maybe, a model maker in the beginning. He was a model maker. Yeah. yeah. So when he told me, he's like, "Yeah, man, I had to work on the Sulaco." So it's like he he had all those like stories of things that we you know like it really inspired us from back in the day i heard some stories about what they were doing in the model shop you know so it's just like 
oh man, if you would do it this like today, yeah, you'd probably having some lawsuits on your head. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely, it's definitely like a, a, the the industry, the movie changed. industry definitely definitely changed a yeah. lot for sure. It's like it became much more professional, and you know, for uh, back in the day, it was much smaller. I think, right? And uh, I'm not really sure, but for sure, it's a different dynamic. Uh, I believe. Yeah. Um, but anyways, um, so to, that's kind of like how I end up getting here. And that's right. I mean, that's that's like a perfect sort of, you know, story almost. You know, it starts with one post and kind of goes crazy out of that. So it's very similar to what would happen to me, actually. Um, uh, I've posted the work that, I, that I've done for Crytek. It was one of the canceled projects. Mm-hmm. And the uh, CEO from Naughty Dog, Evan Wells, saw the work. I think it was uh, I think it was my friend Hanno, uh, Hanno Hagedorn. He was yeah. actually looking at it. Uh, I sent him a link like, "Hey, check it out." I I posted it online because uh-huh. we were talking back and forth, and um, and he was actually I think he was looking at it. And Evan was walking by. I was like, "Who's that?" <laughs> and I was like, "Phone call." Like I got I got a phone call. I think a couple of that's days awesome. later. Yeah, well, so. that's amazing. If you think about it, like how much you know, uh, the the internet is it changed completely the dynamic of. The oh yeah, hundred percent. Like, like it's not about sending CDs anymore. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. Remember what it, my intention back in the day is just just to send a CD to Blizzard, and it's like you, you never end up requiring that. But he uh, yeah. he changed a lot, so it's hey. awesome. You know, it's a it's a very. It, Made the whole dynamic completely different, it, especially for people that can work off site and yeah. remotely from other countries. I think that's all super amazing. You know, you're um, you can you can see the work of pretty much every country. You know, that is that it is posting online. So yep. that's pretty awesome. I mean, right now it's just so easy, right? I mean, it's co- easy and and not. I mean, one thing that definitely internet changed is the the reach, and because of the reach, there is so many more people that can start posting online and. It's pretty evident how saturated the market has become. Yeah, and it's awesome. Absolutely. It's just so many great art there. I'm yeah. just I'm stoked when I see posts on uh, whether it's uh, DeviantArt or uh, ArtStation or even just Facebook. You know, just following some of some of the artists on Facebook and uh, seeing what they post or what they share is just like wow. Yeah, yeah. So so many cool. inspirational stuff. So exactly. So for that reason, is nowadays it's even it's harder and harder. Like when you look around and you think about the level you are and what other people are doing, you're like you, you constantly have to like keep Improve. working harder and hard to, to harder and harder to, to to make sure that you you keep up with, with the level. So yeah, um, and and that's one of the reasons that I really want to uh, uh, do Edge. You know, uh, the, the, the my personal project because it's you know it's like it's an opportunity for me to really push myself in in in, in a way that you, I have like a more like a, a, a more how can I say that a more established universe so it's not like random right. designs you know it's like it, it, everything kind of has a little have a little bit of a story and I think that's pretty interesting because it pushes me to do uh, different things that I was I might not have tried and I have to do it because it's part of the universe you know what I mean yeah, even your dog agrees. So yeah, sorry about that. He's, <laughs> no, he always worry. does that. If my yeah, <laughs> no, that's that's fine, dude. It's okay. So the hotness we see on the screen right now, uh-huh. that's from the project Edge, right? Yeah, that's correct. Like uh, uh, essentially, when I released the first uh, version, I I posted on the website well, on the Edge website uh, uh, a little link that people could vote and what kind of design they would like to see on the next version of Edge. Mm-hmm. And and the majority chose a heavy unit, um, so that's what I end up developing. And this is this is uh, for who, who is you know following your, your podcast. It's like he has the, the opportunity to see some of the stuff that I did uh, for it. Um, and it it's it, it's freaking it's, crazy, dude. What <laughs> what is Edge, by the way? I'm, I I you know I know what is Edge. But. Yeah, well, basically, Edge Edge is a, a, a it's. A, an open-ended uh, universe that I uh, I, I created, uh, but I'm making a, a book series for it. And the first uh, book that I released it was uh, an ebook, so it's all uh, online, and you can go on the Edge website and purchase uh, the, the the ebook, or you can check like a huge. I did a basically 
since I want to share the universe, I did uh, the free version as well that you can see online. You have that option, mm -hmm. but it's limited. Like it's way less pages, and the full version comes gotcha. with more tutorials and it essentially talks about a story uh, uh, of, of this universe that I created, uh, in, in, you know, in the future and, and uh, the, the politics are, are all crazy, you know, uh, as we expect that this is actually going to happen and it's becoming more and more like that. So creating the whole story actually set up this, this um, uh, whole new dynamic in the world and, and basically Edge follows that and UMD, which is the company that it generates a lot of the the, the military uh, design, uh, military tech for uh, United States, especially. It's uh, it's basically NASA being taken over by the government, and it, they said, okay, we're gonna use your guys' knowledge of space exploration and and everything else, and you guys are gonna become militarized. And so they created this new conglomerate that's called UMD, which is called United Military Division. Nice. Um, and and it, it, I I'm slowly showing a lot of designs and um, that I'm building for the for the universe and I'm working on the second issue right now um, because the I I I have the really cool opportunity to work with um, uh, two writers from Brazil. They are a brother and sister, Gustavo Ribeiro and Gabriela Ribeiro, mm -hmm. and they are helping me to develop uh, uh, the, the stories and. And we are creating uh, a couple of f fun stuff uh, to to that you know it's taking place on this universe that I uh, I created, and they are developing uh, side stories and things that are happening there. So it's 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 pretty cool, and I'm really excited to be able you know to, and really looking forward to tell more and more what we have going on. Uh, yeah, it looks rad. Show me the animation, dude. Show me the animation. <laughs> Please Thanks, do Patrick. show the animation. Yeah, so so <laughs> essentially, uh, when I do things like that, I really like to uh, have like multiple functions, right? So I thought that this guy would be fun to to have uh, um, uh, two uh, two different modes. So he would uh, actually treat like see, so he has the basic uh, view that he, he you know, like he has the uh, those weapons that are available. By the way, I I released recently. If you go to the Edge Facebook page. Um, I, I'm releasing news and uh, uh, updates every every uh, every week almost, and I released a news paper uh, showing talking about the, this unit. And one of the things that I, this unit has is this device here on the top, which is uh, uh, a laser that you can uh, shoot incoming missiles. So it's, it's, it doesn't shoot lasers as we see in movies. It's more like a really concentrated heat. Mm -hmm. uh, a point which it, there are the military are actually working on it, and and that's yeah. what it is. It's like a mobile turret that can uh, block incoming missiles. Uh, so the second mode that you have is essentially when you you have that one, like where you can actually <laughs> all the weaponry, um, and you know so it gets into the right the shooting mode. So it has way more uh, uh, types of weapon that it can release. And the other thing that is it's interesting is like the mobility changes too because he actually becomes a mobile turret that can move around in a faster way. So this is still work in progress. There's a lot of stuff that I have to do in the back, but I, I just want to show you guys like a little bit of what I've been doing for this for this design. This is fucking uh, crazy, dude. Thanks, man. I really, <laughs> really, really honored you liked. Um, no, seriously, it looks rad. Thanks, man. It's probably um, one of the best works works I've seen so far from you, man. It's thanks. just like wow. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, man. I and I really took my time on the, with this guy just to make sure that I'm putting a lot of love, especially because the 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 the, the guys that are you know everyone that chose this unit. So I I thought that it, it deserved a very nice attention to it. And and I I'll be future, featuring. A lot of uh, you know, and renders and shots of this guy in the in the second uh, issue badge, and um, and I want to do some fun stuff like you know, just to give a little sneak, not to give a sneak peek, but talk about it, like showing this in, under maintenance and things like that. I think that it could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but that, there we go. This is one of the designs that I I've been having working on, and I have many other things uh, that so I'm sick. Thinking. Thanks, man. So really really I have a question to you. Here. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so I I can only imagine how much work this really is. I mean, I, I'm I'm sure you're using you know kid bashing techniques and 
Mm-hmm. You've been doing this for so many years, it just becomes almost like um, like a muscle memory to you. So obviously you work uh-huh. faster when you work in hard surface. Yes. But uh, I'm pretty sure you, I'm pretty sure you're running into problems when it comes to running your own show, like ma- making your own personal IP or working on personal mm-hmm. projects. You know, um, I've one thing I've started to realize is uh, as soon as we started Learn Squared, I've just realized how much work it really is. Apart from just making you know content, making sure that the classes are perfect and we yes. address all the issues from students and work with students and whatnot, there's so many. So so much of everything else that is always impacting every day. It's every day something new. I'm I'm wondering if you if you experience the same thing when you work on your you know personal projects. Yeah, absolutely. It's not an easy thing. It's like it requires a, a, quite a bit of sacrifice because I you know a lot of times when I'm working on edge, it's actually I'm waking up six in the morning and work until nine and um, and you know around nine o'clock I drive to. Uh, Manhattan Beach uh, because I, I don't want to drive to Manhattan Beach before nine anyways because it's, it's just waste your time in traffic. That's uh, true. Yeah, so I four oh five four oh five north. Yeah, from four oh five north. So. Uh, yeah, the second the second asshole of devil. First yeah. one is one on one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and and it can be. Uh, I mean, just for pe- from people that are not in, from C- California th- or United States. They understand, you know, 405 is one of the main uh, freeways we have around uh, this area that goes, to, you know, to all the way up to north and after San Francisco. But uh, I live around uh, 30 miles away from, from work, uh, which is quite a bit of drive when you have a lot of traffic. So I um, basically my drive is not easy. What I try to do every time that I'm driving, I have like a list of audiobooks that I, I read, uh, oh, I perfect. listen to. It's I great. The same thing. Yeah, the super helpful man. It's uh, uh, I'm listening to to one now that actually Vitali, Vitali Bogorov uh, recommended to me. Uh, you know, uh, which one's that? Uh, yeah, let me let me. Uh, he mentioned two. Uh, one is called Relentless. Oh, I think uh, I know that one. Yeah, and how Google works. So those are. The, oh, I don't know that one. Either. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so the, I'm 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 listening to Relentless, and, and you know, it just talks about like essentially. Uh, you know, never stop. You can never stop. I mean, not that you can, but it's like if you want to uh, achieve great things, you have to work uh, really hard. And like, even if you think you work hard, you're not hard enough. You know, so essentially, you become like relentless. And he he is basically he's this guy is actually the coach of uh, um, the Michael Jordan and guys like that. So he talks about the drive of you know and of those kind of athletes, and he, he kind of reflects a lot in what. It, you know, we want to do. Um, yeah. And c- coming back to the project, like essentially, it, it requires that type of uh, that that type of commitment. And you know, since I, to me, I think every time that you want to do something that is a little bigger than the, the than the the, the current uh, job you are fulfilling at the moment, you have to you know make some sacrifices and push yourself. You know, and it's, yeah, you know, I want to develop a universe. I want to. To get more and more people to see what I'm doing, so I have to make sure that I'm working really hard to to achieve that, you know. And that's going to require some sacrifice. You know, there's no way that anything like that is going to come easy. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's a lot of work. Uh, something that uh, everyone realizes with yeah. time. It's just like you cannot achieve the specific level of greatness, whether it's a greatness. Now, again, it's it's to everyone's perspective, depending on where you come from and what are the realities yeah. that surround you. Mm-hmm. There's always uh, different goals that you're going to be after. And if you, wanna, if you want to achieve those goals, there's always going to be some kind of sacrifice, whether it's a sacrifice in terms of uh, foregoing your friends friendships and you know focusing yeah. on work or yeah. or you know not spending enough time with family or whatever exactly. that is it's just yeah. like it's always something that will be on the way yeah. and you you have to find the right balance now question is if you okay. balance if you balance it towards it's like you know that there's always like this pyramid pyramid with uh-huh. three corners and three corners uh, telling you three interesting things like smart beautiful and rich uh, uh-huh. Which of which which two of those you're gonna choose? You obviously want to have everything. Yeah. It's never gonna happen. You can only choose two. Yeah. So um, it's pretty much that, and just like the more the more you steer yourself towards one of those corners, the the better this corner is become is going to become, right? Exactly. Absolutely. So and, and and it's a huge balance for sure. And I really I'm mean, I'm very you know fortunate even even though I have 
my two kids, you know, my my son, he uh, um, he's he's already uh, twenty and he's studying art and you know he's doing really well and 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 but the fact that he he's working in, in kind of the same thing that I'm working now and he he's studying that, I, you know, really helps me because he free labor. No, it's not, no. <laughs> No, not at all. It's like I, I want to teach him. No, no. So from the get go, I want to. I, I know, but I want to make sure that he understands the value of his work for sure. Yeah. But, uh, but the one thing that uh, is it, helpful is the support that I get at home. You know, so my, yeah. uh, my daughter, she she really appreciates and she 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 watches a lot of anime with me. And you know, even though my wife doesn't really is participate in the you know watching anime with me but she respects a lot you know what i like to do and what the things that i'm trying to achieve so that kind of support is also very important you know so i'm very fortunate that i have my family here you know that is always you know uh, supporting me in that level and and and, and, and it's, it's pretty awesome you know when i was releasing uh uh edge you know my son he he helped me look through all the tech stuff uh, the 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 ebook just to catch errors and things like that so super helpful and it's, it's just you know showing to them the stuff that i do and they get excited that's really cool um but coming back to the to the to the the, the, kind, the kind of sacrifice that it requires i think it's it's cool to talk about um how even even if you're working um i i think as an artist it's really positive for you to always try to keep up doing uh your personal work i for me for myself in particular i i never got a, a job uh, that it was purely based on the portfolio that I have done on my previous work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So to get a job at Blizzard, I need to work on my personal work, uh, which was the Marine, and I worked from, on that on like from 10 p.m. to 3 in the morning and come back the next day to work, And you know what I mean? So it was a lot of working late there, and then um, to move to, 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 to change my career to movies, I... Uh, actually, uh, when I got uh, contacted by uh, Jeffrey Beecroft, the production designer of Transformers, he was looking at my blog, which had all my personal work. So he, you know, he didn't really look at my work at Blue, from Blizzard, and he, um, but he got interested on in getting me because of the work that I I presented on my blog, which is all personal work. So to me, you know, it's very important. I think that that you always keep that, you know, especially because if, imagine if you work like two, three years in a project that, get, that gets canned, it's yeah. like you have nothing to show. Exactly. That's you know? true. That's so, you know, I know a few artists that basically worked on projects in succession and they have, they have nothing to show for like seven, eight years because yeah. everything was canceled. And that's, that's one of the things. Serious. That's one of the things that happens quite a lot in games. Actually, it suck. It doesn't suck as much when it happens in film, uh -huh. because in the film you actually get good connections. You get to know production designers. You get to yeah. know director. You get to know uh, producers. So once you know those people, they will hire you for the next job. If you're a great artist and you've done a great job and it's just like really a good concepts or illustrations or 3D designs or set designs yeah. or whatever your role is, if you're putting your putting out your absolute best, they'll hire you right away. Mm -hmm. And it's you have to work on a couple of films. Once you finish a couple of films working in the union, you pretty much know everyone you need to know. You will know enough production designers and enough yeah. um, producers and directors that you will always have offers coming in. Yeah. Uh, especially if you just put out your absolute best. That that's actually actually the the, the major requirement. You know, you yeah, need to sure. be you need to be putting your pouring your heart in. If you're not, then it's it's going to be pretty apparent. Like, yeah, you're a good artist, but you know, I'll I'll find someone else. Yeah. But for if sure. you're putting your hundred percent, mm -hmm. then it's fine. In games, it's it doesn't work that way. You you're hired for a studio and um and you're judged on the work that is already released. And in most cases, I've noticed there's something, I, it might be something that was a case back in the days when I worked more in video games, so especially when I was starting, mm -hmm. where everyone would judge you from the project you've created, looking at your credits, rather than looking at your work. Huh, and, I think, and I think also there is an aspect to it. Again, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking, it's an aneg anecdotal uh, mm -hmm. sort of experience, so don't... Yeah. Take it with a grain of salt. It might I might be absolutely wrong about it, but that's uh -huh. that's what I feel personally. Is that there's a reason why artists don't want to show you their uh, failed uh, experiments or failed work. 
is yeah. because they will be judged on the fact that their work is inconsistent. And I remember specifically when I worked for a company X, I'm not going to say where, uh -huh. um, because I've worked in a few studios, but um, uh, there it was a case. Like we, there would be an artist that had a great work, but also had average works. And he was like, oh, he's not consistent enough, you know? Uh -huh. And like he would not get hired. But never was a case to look into his work and say like, hey, this is actually from a couple of months ago, so he's improving really fast, you know? Uh -huh. Like that, that's never being taken into consideration. I, I that's, think that's, that's one of the reasons, I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of artists just don't want to show their work because they get, get afraid that they will be judged in that very specific way. Huh. Um, and uh, to the point, like imagine you work on, the, on a game for uh -huh. a couple of years and it it just gets canceled or the studio goes bankrupt yes. and you're stuck with nothing that you can show for the next couple of yeah, years. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the point that, uh, that I'm making is, you know, if, if you, if you, I mean, I think you have to put your heart and soul in every pro project that you're working on for other people, you know, so I can just make sure that you deliver your best, right? Especially because they're paying you. So <laughs> you have to make yeah, sure of course. you're doing a great <laughs> job and not like half-assing anything. But, I yeah, work on your but, personal. But uh, I, I believe that's that's an important thing. And also, I don't know, uh, uh, since a lot of what we do, especially in the in this, you know, the, in the more the, the less technical part of the industry, like which is you know more concept design and you know modeling, mm -hmm. even uh, uh, in animation, I think there is is there is a lot of passion involved. You know, the the more technical side has a lot of passion too. But it's just you see that kind of like. Uh, you know, so I could be like a drawing all the time type of stuff. It happens more on that creative, the, that creative part of the, yeah. the design. You know, it's, uh, the technical part is very creative as well. I just want to make sure that like, rubby people. Yeah, I mean, play. but it's just it's a, just a different approach, right? And um, so if you're if you're on that part of the industry, I think it's it's really cool to kind of keep your passion always going. You know, because at some point, if you are only expecting the company you're working for to just to deliver all the happiness for a project, you just, you're going to get frustrated uh, because there's no perfect universe in any project they work, you're working on. You know, it's like yeah. it doesn't matter how good the company is, at some point you're going to have things that are going to be upsetting. And so it's always good for you just to keep your fire going with things that you love, you know. Uh, yeah. But anyways. I'll... Sort of like just to com complete the sentence, it's just like how how much effort you're putting into your work. Um, yeah. The one of the one of the projects that I had the most fun working on, and and probably the best experience working on, was obviously The Last of Us. And yeah. you know, uh, the quality of the work that we've managed to get was pretty pretty high in terms yeah. of like what this turned out. This game is still. I don't want to. I want to. I I shouldn't, but I will humble humble brag a little bit. Uh -huh. To to this day, it's the most praised game ever made. It's just mm -hmm. it's just won pretty much every single game of the year awards ever in the existence, right? Wow, <laughs> it, that's it, awesome. I think it's like over three hundred game of the year awards. It's just like Jesus. wow. Yeah, I heard amazing things about it for sure. It's, yeah, it's one of the lifetime projects. I was so lucky to be on it because it's. I was just a cog in it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's a it's a sum of great minds that basically create the the product, right? Yes. Um, but I wouldn't, and I'll tell you, the amount of heart that we were pouring in to make this project happen is is what actually made it uh, awesome. But also, one of the best work I have in my portfolio is actually from that project. You know, that's awesome. Yeah, that's and nice. also. The most work offers I'm getting is because of that work. So, wow, that's that's fantastic. So that's that's sort of like a testament to the idea. Like, don't like whatever whatever the project is going to be. Uh, if if it's uh, if it's a high profile video game or real freaking bullshit work that you have mm -hmm. to do just to mm -hmm. make a living. Yeah. If you put the effort to make it as awesome as possible. It, it will be appreciated because here's a, here's one thing that I've learned also. Sometimes you work for um for for a person A or you know whether it's a designer, creative designer, or whoever that is, right? Uh -huh. You work for that person, and it's a bullshit project. Like it's one of those sort of like I don't really wanna, but I need to pay my bills, right? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Um, and that happens. You know. It happens, right? 
But you yeah. never know. Maybe that, that guy is a high school friend with one of the best production designers or something. Because that happens a lot. Yeah. And Absolutely. you get a recommendation because you've created so much epicness just by being proactive and really, really sort of a person that wants to create the best possible results for that project mm -hmm. that is just being noted, you know, like, hey, man, I yeah. know this design. And, and that, you know, your, your boss that you have right now might know friends and recommend your work to people that work on something that you always dream to work on, you know, like I've dream, I dream about working on this. Or I dream about working on, on Blizzard's uh, cinematic team, right? Yes. Or I dream about working, uh, uh, you know, on, on film, on Ghost in the Shell, whatever that is, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and it's I, just like... I, I totally agree, man. I think that, that I, I, I'm a true believer that every, kind, every type of great work that you produce, it's definitely going to have an impact somewhere. You know, so it's hard though, because it's just like it's it's that project you're getting. It's just like ah. Uh, yes. No. I, don't want <laughs> absolutely. No. It, it's not easy. You know, uh, yeah. and, and especially, uh, you know, in the in the union as we were talking about, like it has a different dynamic. So, a, a lot of times you're also not working on one movie only, right? Because you after you made a, a certain amount of connections, you're actually working for more projects at the same time, you know, so uh, you get calls and it's like, oh, do you have one day available, you know, that kind yeah. of stuff. So uh, a lot of times you, you, when you get pulled in different directions like that and then maybe there's a side movie you're working on that is so much fun. It's like, oh man, I wish that one was the, the my full-time gig, you know, so. Yeah. But again, as you're saying, if you do the best you can, I think that's always going to have a positive impact. Awesome. Uh, yeah, which is I agree 100%. It's just like you always want to be at your best and you always want to pull maximum effort regardless of what that is because you never know the outcome, you know. Sometimes yeah. it and might be yeah. unexpected. So And it's also a good practice for you as a, as an artist, you know, just yeah. you, you just you never never uh uh be uh, happy when you're not achieving the best you can, you know. Yeah. Um this audiobook <laughs> that I was listening to talks a lot about that that if you want to be extraordinary, you have to make small miracles every day. Yep. You know, and which is pretty hard. Yeah. Hundred you know, percent is not enough. You have to go yeah. with that extra. It, yeah. Like, or five. When, I, when I heard that, it was just like Jesus Christ, man. You know, it's like not only you're trying to be do good stuff, you have to make small miracles every day. That's that's yeah. that's a high level to achieve. You know, but uh, I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, that that's why. That's why you it. see. That's why you see. You know. You you doing what you do for Project Edge, and that's why you see Vitaly posing in fucking real mech that yeah, he's designed and helping yeah. to design. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man, Vitaly is a, like a huge inspiration for me, and for you know, I I, I was very fortunate to work with him and, at, at Blizzard, and you know, the guy is you know, not only he's, a, he's extremely talented, but he's super focused, and um, you know, I'm very fortunate to be able to you know just share and you know see stuff that he's working on when he has new stuff and and it's just like he is, is it is a huge inspiration for sure uh, i mean um uh, he uh, J uh vitali joe peterson jonathan ruby uh and david keegan we all work at blizzard together and we you know we we're constantly in touch and we always yeah. talk about like uh you know ex ex exchange the dream team <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's, it's 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 more like you know it's like a really good good group of fans that share a lot of positive information so i think that's also something very good you know it's like trying to surround yourself with people that are positive that are just want to see you succeed that's that's very helpful yep i yeah. agree all right um we're gonna wrap it up really soon um, okay i'm talking for almost an hour now so okay. what's going to happen next we now will allow some time for for questions there was quite a few there uh -huh. So let's keep them going. I'll let Andrew talk because Andrew is the voice from <laughs> behind the curtain. I'm the voice of the people. Uh -huh. the voice of the people. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> all right, we got, I think, five questions. Uh, uh -huh. good ones, though. Uh, from Alex, he says, what percentage will 3D concept art take over in the pipeline versus 2D concept art? Uh, I used to be almost 100% 2D, and now it's shifting to much more 3D. Will that keep going? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a really good question. I always get that because I work a lot in three D, uh, and but I do I do work in a lot of two D uh, as well. It's just not as much. But I believe that 
I, I don't, or, okay, I can't predict the future, but the way that I, I see going, I think the, the, two, the two tools are always going to be kind of equal because uh, I, uh, 3D uh, so far has not bit the, uh, be, uh, has beaten, has not beaten the speed that a uh, 2D has, you know, it's like he, if you Unless you're Vitaly. Yeah, but, <laughs> but even, yeah, I know, but even the Vitaly, it's like if you ask, you know, it's like if you do 10 really quick uh, 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 silhouette paintings, right? Yeah. And, you know, you get a guy like Edna Tividad. Have you worked with Edna Tividad? Uh, yeah, well, I, we had him uh, for, I think he joined, uh, he joined Tron uh, yeah. when I was on the, on the show. Uh, and he was there a couple of weeks before I had to do the parental leave. Um, yeah, but I, I not but yeah, he's, he's, he's yeah, he's a bad. guy, and he only he only works in two D. Uh, I'm not sure he he probably he knows a little bit three D, but it's his his main thing is two D, and he produces two D designs really fast and really great quality. And you know, I was sitting one day and working on Transformers uh, four, and and you know, he did like ten mechanical dog designs, and it took him like I don't know four hours, and he did like 10, 12, really good and finished. 2D designs, right? I, I don't think we you can do that in 3D to the level that he did in 2D. So, you know what I mean? So yeah. to me, I think it's a balance, right? Let me uh, let it, me it, throw you let me throw a curveball at you. Uh -huh. uh, so do you do you think that that's going to stay like this for for a while no. for now, I, or it's going to change? Well, I think this is based on tools, right? Like there, someone posted on Facebook recently this tool that you can actually sketch in 2D in, in 3D. Mm. Have you seen that? Um, yeah. I don't remember the name of the tool at the top of my head, but I don't I saw remember this, either. But, you know. but yeah, it's a tool that you can do some sketching in 3D, then you block out. You know, so that kind of stuff is like definitely going to help to get more and more in 3D. But um, I don't think it is going to be a complete replacement. Uh, and for, for, with the tools that we have right now, I think it still is a pre-balanced environment for yeah. both. I it agree. is. It is a good. It is a good rule of thumb just to learn a little bit three D. Just because of the 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 the, the, the nature of it, it really helps. You know, if you have to do an environment with a lot of perspectives, you can throw some objects there just to give you a little bit of base, so you don't have to figure out every single perspective. Uh, you know, you have to know perspective, but you don't have to try to like spend your time figuring that out every time you're doing a painting. Just for speed's sake, I think that's helpful. You know, it's never a yeah, bad of idea. Course. It's never a bad idea for you to use the best tool in hand. You know, you don't, you're not going to model a face with polys nowadays. You're going to sculpt any ZBrush. You know, is that cheating? No, you're using the best tool for the job. You're going to sculpt a face and you're going to retopologize that or using your Z remasher to do that. So it's just like you just have to be smart and not really think about is it 2D, is it 3D, is it cheating? Or just think about like what is the best tool that is going to get the job done in the best way possible. And also showing the director or the production designer or your client or whoever, what is what he's trying to achieve and what is the best tool that is, you're going to convey that. You know, so that's kind of the mentality. Um, yeah, I'll, from my pers personal beliefs, I'll elaborate you're right. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to change uh, drastically to a point where uh, it's only 3D next yeah. year, right? It's, that's, yeah. that's not going to happen. There's also a... There's also a dynamic that I start to see going is um, crowdfunding obviously changed the, the, the grounds and changed how everything is being created yeah. uh, these days. Uh, because uh, frankly, you can get someone who just does something really interesting and it's not necessarily driven by tools, uh, but driven by, by passion. And, and it, what it does, it, it, it driven creates... driven by design, right? Yeah, it creates, it creates an audience that appreciate it and then you don't care about what tools you use. You have your audience, and they will follow you regardless. And that will make you a living. There is a Patreon. There is Kickstarter. There are all those sites that allow you to do crowdfunding. Yeah. There is um, Gumroads. You know, all those things allow you to become self-sufficient if mm -hmm. you if you do it right. If you're honest, if you're a person that really you know value quality yeah. and wants to create something that is really entertaining and it's it's just going to work. It's very similar to a way totally you agree. had uh, eSports with pro gamers, right? Uh -huh. So you have people that play video games as a sport um, and they, you know, they are really good at video games. And then you have also people that cannot play shit. They just really suck. <laughs> but they like to play and show how they play and yeah. show how they fail and just be really entertaining. And that's what makes them entertainers i think the best example is pewdiepie right he's has like he he made he's making millions of dollars 
every year because he's one of the best entertainers out there in terms of, you know, just being a, a pers persona on YouTube. Mm -hmm. He's just creating content on YouTube and, and, and it's really fun to watch. I, I guess the, the more, um, uh, more uh, a good example of a person that I think is becoming a superstar is Ross Tran. He's just like, he's just mm -hmm. a, such, a, such a funny guy. He's super, super entertaining. And his channel is just rad. Like if you haven't seen it before, Go to Ross Draws uh, on YouTube, and you'll be you yeah know, mind blown. Like I how need, how well it's done. It's just like super super funny, and he's really entertaining as a person. So I definitely need to check that out for sure. And yeah, so just sort of to come back to the to the gist of it. Yeah, it's it's not gonna change over a day, but I can I can clearly see the shift. I feel like in film, a lot of people do use 3D more and more, and it yeah. becomes more expected. And it's also, you know, there's something gratifying about using 3D uh, is when you actually, whatever you create can actually be used to, uh, it's actually printed yeah. or uh, manufactured, you know? Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly what happened when I work on, uh, worked on uh, the interior of the TIE Fighter, uh, the special forces for, the, for Star Wars 7. Uh, the in the first Tie Fighter you see in the movie is that dual seating one, right? Like you have uh, the two characters inside the Tie Fighter. That design, I, I created the design in 3D, and they essentially they 3D printed the whole design exactly what it is. So if there I look, go. if I look around, you know, and I, when I was looking around in the movie, I could recognize every single piece that I did. That's so awesome. that that part is free, is a lot of fun for that for that for that reason. Um, but anyways, yeah, let's get more questions. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I, I don't know who asked this one, uh, but it says, do you only use 3ds max or do you use Maya or any other softwares? Uh, I, I use mostly 3ds max. I use Z a lot of ZBrush. Um, I do use Mudbox a little bit to do some uh, texture painting every once in a while. Um, what else? Uh, well, Photoshop for sure, but it's like for 3D, I uh, Max, 3DS Max and VRA are still the, the main tool that I that I have going. Like I created, so I have so many ways to to work and like so many techniques that I developed throughout the years, and and that I doesn't make sense for me to jump to another software right now. Um, at the end of the day, my whole point, uh, whole taking software stuff is like use whatever you feel that is going to be the best tool for you to get the job done you know so if you are really proficient in maya you have tons of tools and you can model and use all the new modeling tools and it give you amazing results just go for it you know uh don't get don't be don't get stuck on like trying to figure out which software is the best because nowadays like, it's really hard to to actually mention blender is even better than a lot of softwares and it's free so yeah like, i've heard that it. I've <laughs> actually seen some results, dude. It's just insane what's going yeah. on there. Yeah, exactly. And it's all free. It's being developed for one, but a bunch of people. So, you know, I was like, I, you know, eventually I want to learn a couple things just to see, you know, what it, what he, you know, he, he does as far as like mechanical modeling. It might be a, an interesting uh, yeah. tool to learn, but I use Max and he does great for what I need, especially with the modifier stack, you know. It's yeah, awesome. modifier stack. Damn it. So good. Yes. Yeah. It is pretty good. Well, uh, Mache, what do you use mostly for, when you're doing 3D? Um, I use 3ds Max for uh -huh. because I n just know it so well. Yeah. Uh, I used to use Moto, but 3ds Max is basically yeah, modifier stack is unbeatable. Yeah. Um, Very helpful. And I use Fusion 360. Yes. Because absolutely. it's just the, one of the most rad softwares ever created. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I started using Cinema 4D. Uh, you know, there is something about Cinema 4D that is really interesting. I, you know, um, Ash Torp got me hooked to hooked uh, to it yeah. uh, when I was uh, his apprentice uh, on Learn Squared, and I've learned you know something here and there. There is there is some tools there that are just uh, outlandishly good. Yeah, uh, that you don't have in 3ds Max, especially anything that is related to sort of motion graphics and yeah, absolutely no, yeah, yeah, that's that, that, they, they are they, they are the dominant uh, they dominate the motion graphics industry and uh, Stephen Massey uses a lot for environment yeah he's, Dylan, and Dylan Dylan Cole as well he's so, killing it so there you go you know it's like they are more like you know it's like the camera projection and all the environment uh, stuff they do is like uh, uh, Cinema 4D is very optimized for that so then it comes back again to what we were talking about that. Best tool for the job, you know. It's like it's definitely exactly. you're definitely using whatever is the best out there for the for the particular job. Yeah, it has the replicator 
replicator stuff that is very similar to how replicators work in Moto. So that was kind yeah. of surprising to me. Yeah. Yeah. And you can do fa facial hair. That's awesome. Right out of the box, you know, and look great. great. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. Anyways, more questions. Yes. Um, Adam says, when showing a design to clients, do you usually present animations of the functions of your designs or just do 2D callouts? If, uh, well, if I do have functions, for example, if I was doing the, 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 the heavy unit and if it was done for a client, I would definitely show a couple animations of the, of, of the work. Very simple, I, you know, I am not an animator. Uh, so I just do like very simple uh, motion just to show what, what opens, what parts go where. And, and I think it's important. The more the, 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 the more clear you can be about the design you're developing, uh, I think the, the best outcome for, for, the, for the clients will, will be. Yeah, animations always help, for sure. For sure, yeah. Cool. Um, is there any tip that... Uh, hold on. It says, is there any tip that or tips that help to stay true to the concept when you translate 2D concept art into 3D art? Um, well, that's a tricky one. I think I think um, if you are translating someone else's design, that's always very tricky. You know, uh, uh, because if the guy that did the design originally he was really clear on the lines and the proportions, and he did the, he create a couple like orthographics for you to understand the volume. I think that gets easier if you have to translate, you know, scribbles or a little loose sketches. You have to be a really good designer, right? Because you need to do bridge a lot of gaps there. And um, uh, thankfully, for the kind of work that I do, I don't have to translate a, a lot of uh, work from other people. It's like it's, I have to either yeah, you do design quick, your own. Yeah, either I quit, do a quick design and and, and then in 2D and, and that design becomes a 3D design or I do the 3D design right away. So I don't have to do a lot of, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, understanding what the concept is to translate. But if you are doing that, I think it's, um, I think you have to study a lot of, actually study a lot of design, you know. So, so if there's something that is flawed on a concept that you're translating, as a 3D guy, you're going to be able to kind of uh, uh, either suggest things that are going to improve the design, you know. Uh, and uh, for example, when the, I, I built back when I was, uh, I was a modeler at Blizzard working on the marine suit, uh, Joe Peterson spent a long time like doing great orthographics and he was extremely clear on what he wanted to do. But he did, uh, he, he, he could do, do so much, right, in a millimetrical level of close-up detail he couldn't figure that out so it was up to me to bridge that gap and do extra details and add things that will you know still make sense and it would just add to the design but it was like an extra level of things that you can do and for that you have to really study more design so you, you have the, the vision you know, to kind of bridge that gap i hope that makes sense yep does at least um, to me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Kai says, do you think it's feasible to do viz dev and concept art without learning 3D? Uh, viz dev and concept art without learning 3D? Yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, uh, I believe there's still a lot of companies that don't require that at all. Um, I, I, I believe that, you know, Blizzard is one of them. I believe they still hire heavily on the 2D, 2D designs and, and, uh, you know, a lot of game companies that are, you know, especially if they have, uh, uh, you know, a, a design, um, a style that is a little more, uh, it's, it stars more the stylized. I think they heavily do more, uh, require more 2D than 3D. So those, those companies, you definitely can work in concept design and with that. Now in movies, it's a bit different. I think uh, you can still do that, but it's like, it's very helpful for the production when you know a little bit of 3D. Uh, even if you can block out a couple shapes, you know, I've seen more and more you know, Ben Proctor always asks the guys, like, can you do a little 3D, you know, because he, Ben is a production designer and he's really good in 3D. So there's a lot of things that he, he does that he uses 3D heavily as a base. So he kind of expects that people just to know a little bit. So it, you can, but it's helpful to know a little bit if you are going to work in productions that require more photorealistic and sets to be built and things that are actually going to be practical in front of you. That's always helpful. Cool. Um, Philippe says, 
if do you only do hard surface concepts or do you also do landscapes organics or anything else yeah i do i do creatures uh as well um you know i can i can even try to show here um i do creatures uh uh and i do landscapes um so i i actually i had a lot of passion for doing uh uh creatures before um, so i i let me show you here so on my website fossildesign.com there's quite a few uh, creatures that i did back in the day um my screen is still being shared sorry yeah. yeah you can see it yeah so anyway so i do i do quite a few creatures i just have not had the opportunity in the recent movies because in movies they they do have the creature department and the creature department it's it's filled by people that are just completely focused on creature design and they're amazing so it's, it's not easy for you to, to kind of get into that and do creature designs but uh, on transformers i actually end up doing some creatures uh so here um on the beginning of the transformers uh there were there was this um alien hand that shows up so i end up like doing a quick design it's like i did a a, a sketching z brush and i just paint it over um so and also your question about environments there you go this is one of the the environments that i did for the for transformers 4 which is inside the the, the lockdown ship uh, this is the exterior based on James Fake design of the, the buttress. Um, anyways, so yeah, I do. I do work in creatures and I do work in environments as well. And uh, I haven't done a lot of like cityscapes and in, in forests and things like that. It's, if, it is a, if it is an environment, it's usually more sci-fi. <clears throat> right Radical. Um, uh, it's only two more. Uh, Nathan says, when coming up with a new design, what kind of inspiration do you pull from to help flesh out an idea? Reference? Oh, man. Uh, I've been building, um, man, since I started in advertising in Brazil, I, I gather reference from, uh, you know, from everywhere. I tend nowadays to look a lot of real machinery and things that actually uh, exist for function and just to really understand, you know, what how things are actually made to work in a real wor world. Um, especially working in things that are a little more realistic that that has to convey the functionality. So, you know, I just go go to Google and type like caterpillar tractor, and and of course I'm always looking for shape uh, uh, for shape inspiration things like that. I look at whatever other people are doing just you know it's just really cool to see other artists and how they explore the shapes and sometimes give, give you ideas of to explore uh something uh it, not copying the artist you know but it's just seeing how he's pushing certain silhouettes and things like that gives a good idea but uh most of my reference and my inspiration comes from from uh, uh real machines or uh, uh, or even like real creatures you know just yeah, I, I, using everything that is real gives you that fresh first uh, uh uh you know you're like you're witnessing something that it was actually created and engineered when you're inspiring heavily in other people's work you get the uh, the, the the translation of something that was already real you know what i mean it's like you just you're just like a couple steps behind of actually creating something that is a a, a little more functioning real of course i'm talking about that because a lot of what I do, I try to make it functional, but that's kind of the inspiration that I usually gravitate towards. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Cool. Uh, there's, if anyone else has any other questions, I guess post them up now. But the last one that we got is from Nathan, and he says, uh, mm -hmm. for someone just coming out of school or a year removed from school, what do you recommend they focus on in terms of creating a portfolio to send to studios? Um, my suggestion would be to really understand what kind of studio you're trying to get into. Because, for example, if uh, you know if you are trying to get into a game company in particular, you really have to look at what kind of style that that game company develops, and you build a portfolio towards that. If you have a couple companies that you want to try, you know you should always try to aim for the kind of style that they they develop. Don't don't copy what they are doing. But do your interpretation of one of their games, or you know, if you're gonna try for ILM, you know, you know that you're gonna have to be more a bit a bit more on the realistic side um, if you want to work in for the movie 
uh, you know, the the effects in in in, in movies at ILM. So uh, also, if you want to work in, in in more in movies and as a concept artist, if you buy a lot of the the art of books, you're gonna see what kind of level and what kind of style the artists develop the concepts for the, for those kind of projects. So that's always very helpful. It's really good for you to basically cater your portfolio to whatever goal you want to achieve. You know, so I, I hope hope I hope this is a, a clear way to just to translate that. Mm. Sounds um, good to me. Yeah, so <laughs> we got two I'll, more questions that popped up. I don't know how many more you want to do. Maybe. Yeah, let's do those two more and and close it. Okay. okay. Um, do you have any more tutorials on the way? Yes, I do. Yep. Uh, for uh, for Edge Two, I have uh, uh, another tutorial for creating hard surface. Uh, as we were talking here, I was just playing around with doing some some booleans in, in Max, which surprisingly is really solid. You know, it's like it works really well. Um, so I, I have a, another tutorial coming for, for for Edge too that it would have like a more complex uh, hard surface uh, using Max and, and booleans. Um, so there you go. Cool. And the last one is uh, about booleans. Actually, it's uh, for hard <laughs> surface. Can I use booleans or Later, do I have to make retopology? Um, well, I, I mean, if you are doing a, a design and, and, and it's purely a, a concept that you're gonna, you know, show someone, uh, you don't have to retopologize anything. Uh, like if you look at, the, you know, you guys still see my screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you if you if you're using booleans, uh, you know, it's like you, you can. As for just a design only, that you're not going to be part of, of production and you're not going to bend around. So there's not a lot of requirements for you to retopologize. But it's kind of cool that if you if you use Max uh, booleans, there is an option here that you can create tessellation, which is not perfect, but it does create like quite a bit of uh, uh, faces in between the design that you just made. So that allows you to kind of bend the design around. Um, and that's pretty helpful. Have you have you seen this machine? Nope. Yeah. So that's well, I pretty... know how to bend, but I didn't know there is a tessellation there. Yeah, there's a tessellation. So... I'm waiting. I'm waiting for um for bend option in Fusion because that will just destroy everything out there. So. <laughs> yeah, dude. Of course. I mean, yeah. You know. Um. But yeah, but, it's pretty rad. I, yeah, I it's it is. yeah, it's pretty cool. So anyway, so if uh, um, just to long story short, if you are doing something for a, a production. And they need to control the subdivision level and apply, to, uh, you know, subdivision one or two. You're probably gonna have to uh, uh, retopologize and make chamfers and things like that. If it's an object that is gonna be, you know, used for design only, there is no necessity for you to retopologize anything. Cool, dude. Thanks for um, thanks for being here, man. Dude. Thanks for for showing up for this because this is uh, pretty rad. Oh, man, I would you know, say. it's an honor, uh, you know, so, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity, you know, super fun to talk to you, you guys, and, you know, you and uh, about this, the industry and like, thank you so much, man. It's awesome opportunity for no, sure. It's, it's, I should be thankful. Should. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for showing up. Uh, everyone who was here online and asked questions, I uh, really appreciate for you guys being here. Yeah. Much love for that. And everyone else who's working, uh, who's not working, he's, who's watching this <laughs> afterwards. Thanks for, for, for watching it towards the end because otherwise you're not hearing what I'm saying. And then I, you know, probably don't care and that's fine i i get it i get it <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right guys. So much, guys yeah thanks have for a everything. good night and um and uh till the next time all right thanks thank you <laughs>